Well, hello everyone. So a couple years ago, somebody on YouTube asked me if we could drive an IGBT directly from a computer serial port. We experimented, I made a video, and as we found out, it wasn't really the best idea because the serial port, number one, isn't isolated from the IGBT, and number two, it doesn't have enough output current to drive it properly. In the comments of that video, a lot of people suggested using an isolated gate driver to do the job. And I was thinking recently, I haven't really messed with it much after that, but I thought we could use an isolated gate driver to do the job, and with a little simple programming, we could make the IGBT through the serial port of the computer do a few interesting things. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you haven't seen the video that I was referencing two years ago, this is what I'm talking about. So here's the computer. This is just a ThinkPad 600, pretty old. And we have this cable, that one, connected to the serial port. And instead of directly connecting it to an IGBT, as you can see now, we have it going through a gate driver. So a couple resistors there to make a voltage divider. The gate driver wants to have 5 volts input, and the serial port will pulse out 12 volts output when information flows out of it. So I have a 2000 ohm and a 1200 ohm resistor just to drop it down to 5 volts. Those are between pin number 3 and the ground. The IGBT in question being driven by the HCPL3120 optically isolated gate driver and the gate drive power supply over there behind the battery, the battery, and the flashlight. So the idea is quite simple. Whenever this computer sends information out through the serial port, really it's just a pulse of electricity and it'll turn on the LED in the isolated gate driver and it will send out a signal to start the IGBT into its conducting state and it will flash the light bulb. But like I said, with a little programming, we can do a lot of other interesting things. Okay, so I wrote a small program in assembly language to control the serial port. I called it dim.exe. We're going to press enter. We're going to run the program and we'll see what the flashlight does. There. Uh, you should be able to see that reflected onto the screen. That's dim. Okay, so I've run another program called Bright. You saw what Dim did, so this should be pretty self-explanatory. Let's try it out. Press Enter. And that's Bright. Very bright. So I've written one more program called Flash.exe. That should be pretty self-explanatory, as the last two were. So let's press Enter, and we'll see what Flash does. Yep, you guessed it. It flashes it. As I said, this is all happening because of the programming and because the serial port there is connected to the gate driver and the program that I wrote actually controls the IGBT and therefore the light and the sequence that I told it to. But now we need to see exactly how and why that happens. That means we need to look inside the assembly program and see why it's doing what it's doing. Okay, so now we're going to take a look inside those programs and see why they're doing what they're doing. So this means we're going to have to look at the assembly programming and understand it. If you've never written an assembly programming or you don't understand assembly programming, don't worry. I'll try to make this as simple as possible for you. It's really not that hard. Well, at least these programs aren't that hard because I wrote them anyways. So we're going to open up the DOS editor and we're going to take a look at, let's start with dim.asm. So, this is how the dim program works. This is how it dims a light bulb through the serial port. First line here, it says COM. This is the routine to initialize the serial port. XOR, AH, and AH register. So the AH register for the INT14 BIOS service 
that's the first line to initialize. AL, when the AL register is set to this value, the COM port is going to be 9600 baud, should have no parity, one stop bit, and eight data bits. Move the DX register to zero, and when you initialize 14H BIOS service, all these parameters tell the computer that's what you need to do for the serial port. So that's pretty simple. Now I move on to the DIM routine. So we're going to use the AL register, first of all. Now, explaining a CPU register is a little bit technical and complicated. I'll try to keep this short and simple, if not a little bit incorrect. So if there's some big shot computer programmers out there saying <laughs> you're not explaining it right, hey, don't jump all over me. I'm just trying to make it simple. So the best way to do is exp explain the AL register is part of a larger AX accumulator register. Basically, in this sense, we're just using it to store a data value. The data value is 81's binary. Now this might seem counterintuitive because we want the bulb to be dim, not bright. But in this sense, ones are actually representing a high value. That means the transistor output is going to be on, not off. Got all that? So, we turn the transistor fully on. Move D the DX register to 0x3F8. Now, the DX register is the data register, and we're using it to send information out to the COM port. 0x3F8 is the address of the COM port. So move that register to the COM port. Now, out DX and AL. The information that we put in the AL register here is going to be copied to DX, and of course DX is linked to the COM port. So it's going to go out on the COM port. Jump dim, that just jumps back to the top, and it keeps looping over and over and over again. So, I mean, it's pretty basic. You just keep looping the same information, send the same information out over and over again, to the serial port and that will make the flashlight it will make it illuminate but it'll make it dim so the pulse width isn't completely zero percent there is a little bit there because of that annoying stop bit that we have to have the stop bits going to push the output high not for very long but just enough to make the light bulb dim so it's not completely off it's just it's just dim okay so Computers can't actually understand assembly language. They can only understand machine code. So we have to have a program that actually converts the assembly language into machine code. If you knew your commands well enough, you could type it out in a hex editor and type out the machine code manually. But that's pretty tedious, and it doesn't really offer that many advantages. So use a program here called Flat Assembler, or FASM for short. And this is how it works. You type in FASM.exe. Then you take your source file. In this case, we were working with dim.asm, and we want to turn that into dim.exe. So just like that, and you hit enter, and it tells you it's assembled. Now I have to try it. Okay, so now that we've compiled dim, I'm going to try it out. We're going to type in dim.exe, and I have the oscilloscope hooked to the serial port. When I press enter, we should see the waveform that it creates on our output. And this is what the output of the eight data bits and the stop bit and probably the start bit too. So as you can see, that's the lowest pulse width that the computer will generate with the serial port. So the next file that we're going to look at is bright.assemble. This is the one, if you remember, that makes it bright. Get a little bit closer there. Okay. So as you can see, the common initialization routine is exactly the same. The difference in this program is in the bright routine. So instead of moving AL to 8 1 bits or 8 low bits, 
the command has been replaced with XOR AL to AL. That XOR is the AL register, so without getting too technical again, that sets it to all zeros. So now it's going to send out eight zeros, which will be eight high bits, so that should actually make our pulse width as high as possible. And then the same as the other routine, move DX to the COM port, out AL to DX, jump right, and it will continue to loop. And that will keep the output continuously as high as possible. Okay, since we already saw how to compile it, we'll skip that step for this loop. I'll just press enter and we'll check the oscilloscope. So as you can see, now it's sending out eight zero bits and that keeps the output high. And it's only interrupted by the start and stop bit. So that's bright and that's what makes the light bulb bright. Okay, so the last program that I made it's called flash.asm. So that was the program that actually flashed the light bulb on and off. So that program's a little bit more complicated. So if you can't follow along, I don't blame you. It is kind of a little bit technically complicated. But if you want to see how it works, stay tuned. So we'll open flash.asm. So the initialization routine for the COM port is still the same, so we don't really need to cover that. But immediately, you'll notice a difference. Right after the COM initialization routine, we've XORed CX and CX, so that sets CX to zero. The CX register up until now we haven't talked about. CX register is actually a counter, and it counts for us how many times a program has looped. So first it goes to the bright routine, same old XOR AL to AL, and then same comp port is moved to DX, out DX AL, but here's where it get in, gets interesting. After we've output the information in AL to the comp port, we increment CX. That's what that means, INC CX. Incrementing CX increases the value of it by exactly one. Note the start. It started at zero, so we incremented it by one. So now instead of a hex value of zero 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 zero, now it's zero 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 one. CX is split into two parts. You can use the entire CX or you can use the CH and the CL. We're using the entire CX register here. Increment it by one. The next command is to compare CX to zero X F F F F. So in other words, it checks to see if it's all the way up to its highest value. So when both the CH and CL registers of CX are at their highest value, the value of CX will be FFFF. If it's at that value, jump to the dim routine, but if not, jump back to the bright routine. The bright routine will run again, it will increment by one. It will check again, it will find that it won't be there, it will jump back to bright. It'll keep looping and incrementing the value of CX by one each time that it loops until it does get to the value of FFFF. At that point, jump equals dim. If CX is equal to FFFF, jump equals dim will jump to the dim routine. We'll scroll down to the dim routine and you'll find a similar story except reversed. Now AL has 8 1 bits, same move DX to the COM port, out AL to DX, and instead of incrementing CX, now we're decrementing CX. So if it got to the dim routine, then that means CX was at FFFF. After it passes the decrement, it'll be FFFE. Compare CX to 0000. zero, zero, zero. You should probably be aware of what's going to happen right now. Every time it runs through the loop, it will decrement it. If it's not at 0000, zero, zero, zero yet, it will loop to bright again. The information will go out to the serial port, and then it will be decremented by one. After this happens enough times, 
the CX register will get to 0, 0, 0, 0. And at that point, jump equals 0, it will jump back to bright. And it will keep looping like that. And the result is, it will flash the light bulb, as we saw. Okay, for our last program, we'll run it and we'll check the oscilloscope output. As you can see, the oscilloscope output shows that the serial port is moving continuously behind, between its highest and lowest states. And that, connected to the IGBT gate driver, the IGBT, the IGBT and the power source to the light bulb, will make the light bulb rapidly flash. By changing the values required to compare against the CX counter, we can change how rapidly it flashes. We can make it flash very slowly, or we can make it flash very quickly, almost like a strobe light. In that program, we saw that we had to get all the way up to CX equals FFFF to get it to jump to the dim routine. And likewise, in the dim routine, we had to get the CX counter all the way to 0000, zero, zero, zero to get back to the bright routine. We could change these values to make it strobe faster. For example, instead of requiring the CX counter to get all the way to FFFF, we could make it only be able to get to, say, DDDD or 9999, and that would shorten the time that it would take to jump between the loops. I didn't put any exit code into these programs, although it is possible to do it, and I have done it before. But, because it has no exit code, that means in order to get it to stop, we have to hit Control alt delete to restart the computer. The reason I did this is because that I wanted to make it so that these programs could actually run directly on a computer. And they can. If you were to, for example, put this program into the first 512 bytes of a master boot record on a floppy disk and set the boot code, and you had a computer with a floppy drive, you could put that floppy in, boot from floppy, and it would literally run, even if the computer had no other hard drive or even an operating system at all. In that case, there would be no need for an exit code, because there would be nothing else to exit to, and it would be the same. You would just control alt delete to restart the computer. Now, if you are interested in trying any of this out, I will leave the source code and the executable files in the description of this video. But if you are going to try this, I must give you a word of caution. I wouldn't recommend running this on a computer that you need to use every day. If you have an old antique dinosaur computer sitting in a closet somewhere, I'd try running it on that first. Otherwise, run it through an emulator first. If you get the program wrong, you could mess up your computer pretty badly because these programs access the hardware pretty much directly. So I do thank you guys for watching, and of course you can try to contact me and see if you can get me. I know I've been busy, but thanks for watching, and comment and message if you have any questions. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.